Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Please never accept checking out Jet World from Milton Bradley. This is ages 9 to adults for 2 to 4 players. Uh, take, I don't know, about 20 to 40 minutes to play. And in Jet World, well, I'm just going to read the back of the description because you're going to get excited. Jet World combines the romance of journeying to glamorous world capitals with the excitement of trading in luxury commodities. Players pilot 747 jets to London, Paris, Rome, Amsterdam, Berlin, and New York. Once there, they invest in gold, castles, diamonds, sports cars, rare coins, and works of art. And their fortunes grow or shrink as market value changes on the unique world price board. And I will say the world price board is pretty unique. So this is a game about you flying all around the world trying to get super duper rich by buying things like castles and cars and then taking them to other places and, and eventually selling them when the price is right. So it's, it's about you being rich and trying to get richer. <laughs> I've had the uh, fortune of playing this game two times. So let's open it up. I'll tell you how it plays and then we'll get my final thoughts. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Jet World. So before we get started, there's a lot going on. Like, there's a big world trade board, the world price board, and then the board down here. So I will be moving the camera around as I talk about various different things, so bear with me. But in Jet World, you are going to be flying around the world and picking up various different goods, like cars and gold bars and castles, and then waiting for the price of those to change via this world price board, and then trying to sell them to make money. So essentially, you're playing as a billionaire trying to become a multi-billionaire i guess i don't know you're flying a private jet all around and then doing that uh so let's go over the components let's get into the gameplay so first component wise we got the two big boards up here which we're going to focus on for right now so first we have the world price board which is actually kind of cool it's going to be twisting and turning and the prices are constantly going to be changing and you want to acquire things when they're lower prices and then sell them when they are higher prices obviously it's actually a, a nifty little device they got right here next we have the world trade board which has a whole bunch of different locations that you're going to be able to go to which are also correspondingly on the board we have France and New York and Berlin and Holland and uh, London and Italy. So when you first start the game, everybody's going to start with $50,000 and everybody's going to start on their corner of the board. You're either blue, red, yellow, or green. Now, uh, you actually have these nifty little stands to put your planes on, but let's just do a quick little test here. And uh, yeah, they don't stay on there at all. Like it's just boop. And they pop off very, very easily. So you'll eventually just end up getting rid of these if for some reason you're playing this game. So what do you do? Well, when you first start the game, everybody's going to get $50,000. And then you're going to flip over the top destination cards. Now, there's three piles of cards here. You have flight cards, special sale cards, and destination cards. You land on the blue spots that are scattered around the board. You're going to flip over a flight card. If you land on the green spots, yeah, you get it. Uh, the destinations cards will come out as people arrive to new destinations. So let's just actually show you a couple rounds, and then you'll quickly get a feel for how the game works. So when we first start the game, we flip over destination. So the first place we're racing to is London. So we go up here to this board, and we look for Flight for London, and we just tuck that right in there. And now the race is on for everybody to get to London. So what do you do on your turn? Well, this is an old school game, uh, as you could probably tell, which means, of course, you're going to be rolling and moving. Before you roll, you have to decide which way you want to go. So right now, this is a huge advantage for me being blue because I just have to go right there, whereas green, not so much. So let's roll it up for blue. Blue gets six, and we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I'm pretty sure that's how you're supposed to do it. To be brutally honest with you, the rules are not the most clear because they talk about how you land on different spots. So actually, I'll just show you what it says in the rule booklet. It says uh, when you land on a yellow spot, you can go into here as long as the city is open. And the city is open if you have the destination card out like that one up there. But we're not actually landing on it. We're going past it. So I'm pretty sure what we did was legal. Not that I imagine anyone in the world at this point really cares. So that would be what I would do. Then I'd go over to the yellow player. And the yellow player has to decide. Are they going this way? Are they going that way? And honestly... It's probably in their best interest maybe to head this way because what will happen is when I eventually get to London, England, another location is going to pop up. Now, let's take back a look at this. You know what? We're just we're just going to get back and we're going to pretend that it's back to my blue turn. And we say, let's say we roll a three. So we roll a three. We get to London, England. So what do we do when we finally get to London, England? Well, that's when we get up to this board right here. 
And then what you're going to do if you're the first person to get to London, England, is you're going to grab all of these article cards right here. And there will be the same number of these as there is players. Right now, I have a four-player game set up. I'll look at all these article cards and I'll say, ooh, what do I want? I could get some rare coins, which normally value from $1,000 to $6,000. I could get some diamonds, which are $1,000 to $8,000. I could get some castles, 2,000 to 9,000, or I could get fool's gold, which obviously I'm probably not going to take. So what we'll do next is we'll take a look at this handy dandy little uh, world price board to see what uh, what everything's at. So rare coins are currently at $4,000, so that's not really that good of a deal. Diamonds, well let's see how much are diamonds. Diamonds are at 7,000, so ooh, that's really not a good deal at all. We don't want to buy, take the diamonds. And the castles, 2,000 to 9,000, it's sitting at 6,000. So you know what? Eh, we'll buy the castle. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, we're going to buy ourselves a castle. Now, we're going to have to pay whatever the cost is. So right now the cost is $6,000. So we'll pay with our lovely, oh, lovely single-sided paper money. Oh yeah, just you can feel it just getting destroyed right there. We're going to pay our $6,000 and then we are going to get the rest of it for free. We're not going to have any tax. So we'll get the castles. We'll put it down in front of us on the board and then we're going to place these three remaining items right here. But now they're going to cost the next person to go to London two thousand dollars so this is why oh come on get get out get out you oh god Grr. come on get get out there we go so now it's gonna cost the next person uh two thousand dollars plus whatever the purchase cost on the world price board is uh, at this point, you could also sell things if you wanted to, but it really wouldn't make any sense because we just got this and we probably want to sell it once it gets to be a higher price. Uh, so then what you do once you have bloop, successfully done that is you're going to go all the way back to your starting spot. Uh, so how the selling works is kind of interesting as well. There's a definite set collection aspect to the game as if I sold this right now, it would give me, you know, $6,000 back, which is not great. But if I had two castles, it makes it so it's squared. So instead of giving me 12,000, it would actually give me 24,000. And if I add three castles, instead of giving me 18,000, it would give me a whole bunch more. So this is somewhat of a mathy game when it comes to that aspect. But for the set collection aspect, uh, you wanna collect a lot of these sets. So I go back to my home spot. The next person to get there, let's say that Red eventually gets there. They get to look at something, they buy it, they pay the cost plus $2,000, and then they put it onto the next spot. And that's actually how you're gonna win the game. You win the game by collecting five of these different articles. Oh, I forgot. Oh, stupid. Five of these articles up here and then getting back to your home, which is another question I have about the game because when you collect one of these, you automatically get home. The rule booklet talks about how it has like a sorry-esque mechanism where you have to roll the exact number to get back to your home base. But here's the thing. When you go to the different locations around the board, you automatically go back to your home. And by that point, you'll actually have five of the things that you need, five of the articles, which means I think you have to get five articles and then leave your home and then get back to your home by the exact number. And the first person does that, gets an extra $10,000. It's really weird and stupid. But anyway, the first person's made it to London, which now means we're gonna reveal another destination card. And now this city is open to go get stuff from. So at this point, it would be Paris, which would actually be pretty good for yellow, but it also could be bad. Let's go revisit. Uh, oh, that needs to go up here. Sure, it's annoying. So this person right here, uh, they could have headed closer to London. If they did, they might be all the way over here. Whereas if they would have headed this way, they'd be closer to Paris. So you're never quite sure what's going to open up. But once someone goes to a city for the first time, assuming it's on the World Trade Board, which is up there, then that is when all the other cities open up. But let's talk about some of the other spots and get you out of here because you're probably pretty bored by how this game plays. <laughs> As I'll tell you in the pros and cons. Yeah, it's, you're getting lucky by not having to play. So if you land on a blue spot, you flip over what's called a flight card. So your airplane is due for an overhaul, pay back $10,000. Important meeting on fuel conservation, return home immediately. Uh, your plane needs improved radar. Repair jet engine, important meeting on fuel conservation. Another one, apparently. Your plane needs improved radar. You are unable to obtain flight clearance. So as you can see, uh, bad weather, lose one turn. So yeah, these cards are bad. You never want to land on blue. Not that you really have a choice sometimes. But yeah, bad blue. If you land on the green, it's good, but it's good for everybody. So let's check it out. Special sales on sports cars. If you own sports cars, receive bonus from bank according to the posted price. So 
You know, I talked about how things are squared or tripled or whatever you want to call it when you have a whole bunch of them. These green are going to pay you for your things, but you don't have to turn in your things. So it's actually kind of good to hold on to them. It's weird. It's a wonky mechanism in the game. Uh, so those are what the green spots look like. But yeah, it's pretty much what you're going to do. Every time that someone new goes to a city, a new city will unlock. You probably never want to be the last person to go to a city. Oh, and there's one more color spot that I forgot about, which is, I believe it's the red spot. So if you land on the red spot, then you turn this, and that changes the prices, and you want to sell things when they're at, you know, the, the right prices, and blah, 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 blah. That's pretty much what we're going to do. The first person to have five of those things and then head back to their home base, but then leave their home base and then head back to their home base, because that's how the rules are written, will get a $10,000 bonus. You'll total up how much money you have based on selling things at the current market value, and then whoever has the most money will be the winner of the game. Unless, of course, you run out of money from the bank, which the two times we played this actually ended up happening. So we didn't get to how the stupid, weird ending works where you have to go home, but then return to your home. You go home, and then you go out to get a sandwich or something, and you immediately come back. I don't know. That in a nutshell is... What you're doing inside a jet world? Already the jet world from Milton Bradley. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the pro side, the game has some cool stuff. Uh, the board is a neat concept. It is. It's a really neat concept. And the world price board. This is actually really cool. I like how they did this. Is it larger? Probably than it needs to be. Yeah, this is the same size of a lot of games. But it's still an interesting concept, especially for its time. So I like how they did that. The game is pretty easy to learn and to teach. I didn't do the best job of teaching it in the middle part. I kind of butchered it just the way I did it, but I assure you, if you actually really wanted to play this game, it's not terribly difficult at all. It essentially just boils down to decide which way you're going to go, roll and move, head towards the locations so you can get these different items, then set collect them and sell them when the time is right, and also hopefully land on green because that's how people get a lot of money, and don't land on blue because blue stakes. Um... <clears throat> Any other pros that I have in this game? It's out of print, so you'll probably never play this game. So that's uh, that's good for you, let me tell you. And the kids in my class would probably agree with me. Be happy you've never had to play this game. Unless you have. I'm sorry. <clears throat> there's... I got nothing. I got nothing for you. Now, there's nice plastic planes. The plastic planes actually look pretty stinking cool. They look even better if they fit on top of the... Um, the base is better, but I'm pretty sure they just included the bases uh, so you could put the Pan Am sticker on it. I'm pretty sure this... Let's just get to the cons. Let's just get to the cons. The biggest con of this game, which is a very interesting con, is this does not feel like this was a game that was designed and then slapped with a Pan Am sticker on it. This feels like it was like, hey, Pan Am was like, you know what? We need to appeal to really rich people. Let's make a game and then just slap our sticker on it. So it feels like it was designed first as a marketing tool and secondly as a game and not vice versa. And it's just not a good game. It's roll and move, which, you know, I can I can give it a pass on that because most of the games that came out at this time period were roll and move, but really it had just such horrible mechanisms. Like, you ever land on blue, it's bad. It's just always bad. You're going to lose money, you're going to lose a turn, and we all know how much you lose a turn. And it's just, ugh, it's all random too. And it's, it's like, if you're the last person to go to a location, you know there's no point to going there. You know most likely what you're going to get is going to be worthless. So you're going to have to pay money to get this worthless item when you could go to different locations. And then the whole end game scenario really bugged me. Because most of the time the rules for the game are pretty self-explanatory. Roll, move, read cards, go to places, get stuff, do some multiplication, collect some of this crappy paper money, and be on your merry way. But then the, the end part is like, all right. How you need to win the game is you have to get five of these from five different locations, and then you have to get back to your home base by exact roll. But it's like, wait, what? How does that work? Because here's the thing. When you get these articles, you go back to your home. It just automatically transports you back to your home. So you get transported back to your home with the five articles, which is the win condition, but you have to roll the exact amount to get in there. And I don't see any scenario in which... It just doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. So you then have to leave your home base and then immediately come back to your home base, but you have to do it by exact exact roll because, hey, that ups the tension. But it's like stupid. It's like, oh, I got all the stuff you want. Oh, actually, could you run to the grocery store, get some milk, and then come right back? Yeah. Yeah. It's just bad. Uh, the game itself is boring. <laughs> the, the, the pieces, 
The paper money is garbage. Uh, the planes don't stick to the little bases at all. They consistently pop off, which, you know, whatever. <sighs> it's just not a good game. Like, it's, I would say, gameplay-wise, it's as mediocre as a lot of the other games that came out of this time period. But this one in particular, it had such cool ideas that it disappointed me a little bit that it did turn out like this. When I read the rules, I was like, hey, this could be good. We got some stock market manipulation. When do I buy? When do I sell? What do I get? And then in actuality, it was just like, eh, it's all pretty random. You get good stuff there? Good for you. Price will turn your way? Good for you. Is there any way to control it? No. You know, it, 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 it gives you the facade that you're going to be going around the world and making savvy business decisions with really... Every decision you make is really simple. It's like, oh, sports cars are low? I'll buy sports cars. Castles are high? I won't buy castles. There we go. I mean, there is a set collection action aspect, but still, it's just... Oh, I have three castles already? Well, guess what? I'm going to overpay for a castle because I'm going to be able to get a boatload of cash for it later. And both games we played ended up with the money running out of the bank anyway. I think that, most of the time, is how the game is going to end because those green cards are just ludicrous. You draw a green card, it's like, oh, yeah, you get paid for all the stuff you have. But it's like, do I have to turn in the stuff? No, you don't have to turn the stuff. It's just get the money. And uh, I'm tired of talking about Jet World. Jet World! Trade and Travel Guide. Why do I play games like this? So I can hopefully steer you people away from games like this. It's not a good game. It's not an enjoyable game. And it is, you know, it probably is comparable with games of that time. In fact, you know what? I know it's comparable with games of that time. Because as you can see, I have a lot of those games behind me. And most of them are not very good. And this one does not buck that trend. Unfortunately, Jet World Trade and Travel Game feels like a game that Pan Am just wanted to slap their name on. As opposed to the other way around. What would be the other way around? Pan Am wants to slap a game on it? Yeah, it doesn't make any damn sense. I'm done talking about it. Jet World Trade Travel Game. Not a good game. Not I can recommend at all. Roll and move mechanisms. Lose a turn. And pretty much complete luck. If you enjoyed this for you, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below. You say the master... What is that? I don't remember what it's called. You personally likes bad game reviews. Uh, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, click on the show notes. Click on that Amazon link. Buy anything on Amazon. It really does support the channel. Throws a couple pennies our way. And in the comments below, let me know what's the last time that you went world traveling so you could buy a castle then go back to your home and sell that castle when the time was right probably never i really have no idea who this game was marketed to it's just such an odd concept but in the comments below who do you think it was marketed to as always thanks for your time youtube